Um, thank you and good morning, everyone. Um, I'll, some of I'll try not to repeat what um, previous speakers have said because we've already established that um, monkey um, MPOX is not a global um, a public health emergency of international concern, and we've already heard about um, the great work communities have done. What I wanted to share with you today is. Um, we are going, we are preparing three things to help prepare countries and communities for the upcoming uh, mass gathering season. Um, the first is an MPOX elimination campaign that we'll be launching tomorrow. The second is um, an MPOX elimination toolkit, which is an update from the, the toolkit um, Juliana mentioned that we produced with ECDC last year. And then the third is compendium of case studies. And I'll try to um, give a, give information about each and also share how you can be involved in the campaign if you would like. So um, to explain the logic behind the the, cam the campaign, which um, we, we've kind of already went over in this call, no one knows what's going to happen next. Um, there's a possibility that um, there's an increase in people contracting MPOX um, in the medium and long term. So we want to prepare countries and communities um, for potential increase and make sure that their that's um, public health advice is reaching people who have not been reached so far. Um, the good news is that with the low number of cases, it does show that a lot of the measures are paying off. However, um, we have to continue. And what we want to do with the campaign is essentially do three, three things, highlight what all different actors, um, including communities, health authorities, and event workers can do to eliminate MPOX. The second is provide a platform for affected communities, including many organizations um, here as panelists and in participants to uh, talk about their MPOX related experiences and also what they're doing to reach underserved populations. And then um, the third is to shine, uh, to highlight what is being done by these groups. So um, just a brief, Sorry. Sorry, just uh, you're still at the first slide and oh, the presentation. Thank you. And I'm I not didn't sure. Know okay, it's supposed so, to be like that, or no, no, it's not. Um, when I'm uh, let me. Um, is it moving now or no? No. Okay, I'll restart. Thank you for flagging me now. Oh, um, thanks, you, Lana and Stefan. So um, yes, okay, there we go. Um, and please do flag if um, if mm -hmm. it doesn't uh, screen uh, um, doesn't share. So I just wanted to highlight some successes from um, the campaign and work that we've done last year. Um, and actually, last year before there'd be mass gatherings in um, different countries, we would reach out to regional and local civil society networks to see what outreach was being done. Um, four countries, um, Pride events in four countries updated their channels with information on MPOX. And then we also had a um, hundred, uh, we had a, a video on um, what's, um, oh, that could be used either for um, stage announcements or also shared on social media. And then that reached 13 million users. So for the toolkit updates, I just wanted to go over, and then I'll try not to repeat. Um, we have resources for communities such as public health advice and materials, including for um, some groups like um, sex workers. And you'd also be surprised there's public health advice for a lot of things like um, also uh, what to do if you're organizing your cruise, what to do um, if you work on a sex on premise venue. And then um, we also have um, considerations for health authorities. So, um, so we've already talked about the importance of engaging affected communities, um, a, a quick tool to how to identify 
um, community groups in your country, um, information about targeting vaccination and implementing innovative strategies to reach populations, and then also how to manage the infodemic and um, to tackle rumors. Um, we have tools for event, both event organizers and health authorities, like a risk assessment tool and advice both for event organizers as well as um, sex on premise venues. Then we have a, um, a number of technical documents um, that, that are made available, infographic, social media tiles, they're all part of the toolkits. And then we also wanted to highlight some resources that were um, for on, on MPOX the, from the community. Um, so there's guidance, materials, and blogs in there. And then the last thing we included is also a resource on how to identify sexual health service providers for um, if in your context it's not evidence or you're not um, sure where to start looking. And then, um, Again, we with the this updated toolkit, what we want to do is um, continue the great engagement that we've seen happening and also um, encourage health authorities and event organizers to continue working with civil society organizations. For the editable social media tiles, we'll have um, some sets that are more linked to public health advice like this, as well as some sets that are, will be more around um, what countries can do with policy asks. Um, we'll have editable versions and we'll share them. Uh, we'll, we'll do wide distribution um, also with community groups, um, because if you agree with um, the messages, would um, be pleased if you would adapt them to, to your circumstances or share them if you feel that is better. Um, and then one, one new thing in the toolkit, we also provide considerations for healthcare providers on working with uh, trans people and sex workers in the MPOX outbreak. And um, again, we're, um, trying to continue the collaboration that we saw last year, which from some um, from some people, including people on this call, we've heard might not have continued. And then um, just to to uh, I'll skip through this because we already talked, but we have the um, risk assessment tool, um, and then. One thing I wanted to highlight is, even though this year we haven't um, heard any calls for postponing events, we did do want to reiterate that it's not um, events themselves, it's what happens at events. Um, so we're encouraging um, health authorities and event organizers to look more into um, organizing events safely rather than canceling or postponing events. And then we, um, well, this has already been explained, but we have what you can do before, after, and during an event, both for mass gatherings as well as sex on premise venues. Um, and then we're also, um, and this is where we, we've seen um, working with community groups being very powerful, but we also want to encourage um, people to um, talk about symptoms, if they develop symptoms, not to go to events, and then also um, if they're comfortable leaving contact details at the reception or sharing information with partners so that they can inform them if they develop symptoms. So for the compendium of case studies, um, this is actually quite exciting, and um, that for some of the people, for some of the um, previous speakers. Future speakers will be part of the um, the compendium as we've done interviews with them. We um, we wanted to do an overview of um, good practices across the response. So looking at surveillance, testing, infection prevention, control, vaccination, um, mass gatherings, behavior cultural insights, social assistance, risk communication, and preparedness. And then um, what we had seen is across the region from countries 
um, spanning from France to Serbia and even Kazakhstan. Um, communities have been involved. Um, and, and then this is, we're hoping can be also a tool to both give inspiration to people planning and pox prevention activities, but also for um, making the case for why partnerships with civil society is needed and requires investment. So just to, to highlight, um, one of one community group, uh, the Rainbow Association in Serbia, was doing outreach at Europe Pride last year, and they had a, a team of seven outreach workers. And um, during the seven days of Europe Pride, they reached over 4,000 participants with preventive advice. Um, the case study will also go into how many of those people had MPOX -like, like symptoms and how the Rainbow Association was able to connect people um, to services. And then uh, lastly, just about the social media campaign, um, we're launching tomorrow. And then we'll, as I mentioned, we'll have a couple of um, key moments. This week we're going to be doing, um, as Nina was saying, it's just after one year of cases. So we've been, uh, we'll be doing social media posts and releasing new material throughout the week. Tomorrow we have a social media live event. And then um, once it's once it's um, once we have uh, con the connection details live, I'll share with um, Nina and other um, other people on our distribution lists. And um, we're also looking to do uh, feature stories from the from the community. So we're looking at featuring outreach um, at Pride events. Um, people talking about MPOX in the ballroom scene, and also um, trying to feature what's, um, let's say, um, academics are also doing to document the role on risk communication, community engagement, and infodemic management. Well, like I was saying, we also have sets of social media tiles that are more um, policy focused on what countries can do, and then also reminding people um, the reminding the public that um, the virus has not gone away, but also acknowledging what has been achieved so far. So if you're interested in being involved in the campaign, would encourage you, um, it's possible to repost stories and social media tiles from WHO accounts. Um, if you want to use our tiles, you're more than welcome to. Um, also, if you feel more comfortable um, adapting for your own channels, um, th th that would, uh, of course, be be welcome. And then, um, if you have ideas for potential influencers or community actors from key affected populations that could be featured, please do let uh, let us know. And also, um, if you're doing community outreach activities um, that you would like to uh, be featured, also do let us know. So on that note, um, thank you, Nina, and I'll pass on back to you.